Blessings to your friend. This is Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to minister into your life each and every time we get this opportunity. I want you to share this, to call somebody, text somebody, let somebody know that this broadcast is on the air. You know, friend, we do not take for granted every opportunity we have to minister into your life. We know something will be said, something will be seen that will truly inspire you to continue to live for God. Stay tuned in. God has great things He's getting ready to minister into your heart. I want to talk about a living sacrifice. Verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, I talked on this Wednesday night, but we want to go just a little bit deeper and further into this if we can. By the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Now, I'm going to say some things I've already said on Wednesday, but I want to rehearse these things for a reason. No one can make you do what you're not willing to do. Even God ain't going to make you do anything. There's a bad connotation in so many church folks that we say God is in control in such a sense that we think he's going to make us do anything. If you go back from the beginning of time, God did not make Adam and Eve not take of the forbidden fruit. God did not make anyone he came in contact with do anything. The only time when he made something happen is when he made a way. And sometimes when he made a way, he would create defaulters or plagues or different things that happen to make a way and provision for his people. But you have to take accountability. This is one of the hardest things for God's people to do is take accountability for their own actions. We put it on the devil. We put it on God. When that don't work, you blame people. But you are responsible. You hear me on this loud mic. <laughs> For your own actions. Amen. And he's telling you, present your own body. How many of y'all ever made you do what you didn't want to do? Anybody who got a job, you definitely be saying, you sure right. You went to work, you didn't feel like going. Some of you mothers got up, and I, I you know, I've, <laughs> I've seen my wife do it when we first had kids. She just get up and change them diapers. And sometimes I was faking like I was going to help, and really, I didn't want to. I didn't. I baby been crying two minutes, and she did sleep. And then when she finally wake up, I'm like, you want me to get it? And she, I got it. I'm like, oh, okay. She was presenting her body a living sacrifice. That's why we try to encourage young couples when they first have kids to, to really get anchored in God because it brings more distress in the home because of all the sacrifices that has to be made. Because you're under distress doesn't license you not to make a sacrifice towards God. It wouldn't be a sacrifice if it was going to be easy. That's why sometimes Sunday morning church is packed and filled because it's one of the easiest service to get to. Although it's hard, it's one of the easiest service to get to. But it's when those midweek services come and you're tired. The kids looking like they dazed and confused. I get some help out there. And you just burn out from work. And, you know, the way the world is set up, sometimes your favorite shows come on. I thought I had some help tonight. When it's church nights. And sometimes you may want a preacher called Revival. He know it's my favorite time of the year when the carnival's in town. And, and this is, and my kids want to go see the trucks at Altel Arena or Verizon or whatever it's called now. But that's where sacrificing coming at. Can I do just a little preaching this morning? God always honors sacrifice. And here the apostle Paul is saying, I'm just begging you. I'm pleading with you. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Now what else he says here? He says holy, which is to say sacred. 
In this world, for some reason, we think holiness is just attached to the title of our churches. But holiness means to be separate, to be sacred, to be different. That's why the Bible talks about holy men and holy women. What he said is they're different people. And what we have to be careful of is then that in this day and age that we are still walking as different people. That we're not walking as the world men and walking as the world women walk. How they just serve God on occasions. How they only walk God when all hell is breaking loose. But as holy men, God, I wish I had some help. As holy women, we have to say, I'm sacred, I'm different, I want God at all times, and at all times, I want God to know that I'm walking in his perfect will. Amen. So he said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till you dead and gone and say, I'm going to start doing something. There's a bad thing that people think you have to be a certain age before you can come to God. And sometimes we discount that we can come to him now. And sometimes if you're not a, a spiritual person like you can be, you can discount young people and say, well, they just live in a life. But we have to find ourselves being reminded that there was other young people in the house, I'm sorry, in the Bible that came to God. There were young men and young women who served God. And the Bible didn't just say that, that men and women were prophets. He said your sons and your daughters. In one place, Jesus said, suffer the children to come unto me. Samuel was a young man, and his mother, Hannah, was a barren lady. She did not produce children. And she prayed to God, Lord, give me a man child. But she made a vow. She made a covenant. If you give me this child, I'll give him back over to temple servants. And most of us know that part, but Samuel was given over to temple servants at a young age. But what we fail to pay attention to is because she sacrificed her first child under God, now God not only gave her one child, but God gave her many children. Oh, when God can trust you to honor your sacrifice. Oh, I thought I had some saints in here. Sometimes we make vows and we don't pay our vows like we should. But because she honored her vow and she sacrificed Samuel unto God, God knew he could trust her. Yes. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say to you people of God is God wants to trust us. But you have to be willing to say, God, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. Oh, give him a clap of praise. Glory to God. Holy. Wait a minute here acceptable unto God. Just because people accept something don't mean God accepts it. This world can accept a lot of things. You know, I used to hear my uh, folks say and my grandmother them say that birds are the same feather. They're usually going to flock together. And sometimes, you know, and I don't say this trying to preach at you. I'm preaching the word of God because some of these things I've been through myself. And so many times we feel at ease because we find somebody to agree with us in our wrong. But because they agree with us in our wrong and they accept it, don't mean God accepts it. There's a lot of things that the government has accepted. There's a lot of things that this world has accepted. There's people on social media that have accepted certain things. There are certain so-called preachers and saints that have accepted certain things. But we want to know that God is accepting what we're giving him. You know what called uh, Cain to really kill his brother Abel? Because Abel's sacrifice was acceptable to God. And Cain still gave a sacrifice, but Cain's sacrifice was not acceptable. And all because God didn't accept his sacrifice, now Cain found himself getting upset at his own brother. And sometimes we walk around mad and upset, wondering why we're not blessed like we should be. Why come I don't have the favor, the anointing? And you mad at the human person beside you when you fail to realize it ain't them that you're sacrificing so much for. It's for God you should be sacrificing for. And if God ain't earning your sacrifice, go get mad at them. Go back and check and see why come he ain't earning your sacrifice. Hallelujah, I feel the anointing. 
It's time to stop trying to please people and get a heart. I wish I had some saints in here to say I'm going to please God up here. I need you to honor my sacrifice. I don't just want to be a church girl. I want to be anointed. I want to have power. I want to be filled with your glory. Everything I touch, I want to turn to something. I want to be blessed and highly favored. I want to be like your own folks. You should be blessed in the field, blessed out of the field. I want to be above and not beneath. But I need to know that I'm getting my sacrifice honored again. Hallelujah. As you hear me preach and teach this morning, you don't have to judge anybody else. Ask yourself, am I really presenting my body as a living sacrifice? It's not easy every morning praying before you get yourself ready. But what the enemy will blind you so you be so worried about getting your face ready. Getting your body ready. Can I just make myself at home here? That sometimes we don't prepare our heart. You ain't prepared your spirit. Can I get down there? You know that half are going to be at work. Why come you ain't prepared to deal with them? Y'all ain't talking to me out there. You know she's going to be there. You ain't got to use her every week when you show up. Why come you ain't prepared? You can look cute all you want to. Looking cute don't prepare your spirit. And sometimes we fail to sacrifice to really pray because you don't know what trials, what tribulation, what phone call you don't get. And the devil sometimes try to trick you out of sacrificing and giving God prayer. And now when all hell get broken loose, now you're depressed. Now you're suppressed. Now you're suicidal. Now you're saying, I don't know what to do. And all God is saying, what you should have did was just present your body as a living sacrifice. God will prepare you for things you didn't know was happening. Amen. The children of Israel didn't know they would be in the wilderness for 40 years, but God knew they was going to go in the wilderness. And after he brought them out of Pharaoh's out of Egypt, the, the last thing you read before they left out of there was God told them to prepare to go and get victuals, go and get things so they can be sustained in the wilderness. What is it that we think that preparation is not of God? God always prepare you for what's coming. Yeah. Somebody say, I don't believe it. You need to look at the life of Jesus. He prepared his disciples for what he knew was coming. He constantly told them, if this and the hour is coming where I'm going to die and I'm going to rise again. If this and the hour is coming where I'm not going to be with you always. If this and the hour is coming where you may not understand what I say now, but you will get it later after I die and rise. And for some reason, we have missed the spirit of preparation in this generation. We say it's faith, but it's really foolishness. No, wisdom say prepare us. Wisdom say be ready. You know the devil's after you, your husband, your your wife, your children, after your money, your mind, after your heart, but sitting up talking about the devil don't make him stop. You gotta present your body. I have some sense here. Present your body as a living sacrifice and be prepared and tell the devil you may show up, but when you show up, I'm so prepared that the God inside of me is getting ready to show out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. I said, shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to be a living sacrifice. And I'll preach a few more minutes. You that was here last night, I held a little long, so I'm going to make up for it this morning. But don't rush me because the staff already had an extra hour off. A living sacrifice. Is your body a living sacrifice? Sometimes we admire other people's bodies for being a living sacrifice. One thing I say about Reverend so-and-so, he always pressing his way through. It ain't a time I ain't been to the church hall and I ain't seen him. Amen. You ain't been there but twice a year. <laughs> I drink to that. Come on, don't get mad at the preacher. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get mad at Rev. Can I say something to you? You don't get upset at real today. Sometimes we want people, we want them. Yeah. We want them there. Uh -huh. And if you really got a matter, you want that prophecy that moment? Yeah. Give me a message of word, because what I'm going to do. Yeah. And what you're really saying is, I want you to present your body a living sacrifice. Yeah. But what you fail to realize, God said, what you asking of them? Yeah. 
Come on. I'm asking the same thing of you. Give me an anointed pastor. Give me an anointed poor lady. You know, we talk a man after your own heart, God. And God looking down and said, I'm trying to get one out of you too. Oh, come on, don't get mad, Rev. Everybody needs somebody. Yes, that's true. But if we all, we all can learn to sacrifice it and all present our bodies and live in sacrifice, then we'll start feeling the help and the love we should fill off one another. The book of Ecclesiastes says two is better than one. The book of Ecclesiastes said that when there's two, that they can keep one another warm and filled and keep one another comforted. And the only way you can do this is when two people are sacrificing. And God set it up for the saints to sacrifice as well for leaderships and staff and team members to sacrifice. Never put so much high hope and depend on someone else to do all your sacrificing for you. Their sacrifices is between them and God, just like your sacrifices is between you and God. And just like they had to present they brought it, you I was in your body. What good is my body being prepared to preach if your body ain't here prepared to eat? You got to present your body to come and get the word, and I got to present my body to come and give the word. You ever had that argument with somebody and you, this worked both ways. Look at your neighbor and say, this worked both ways. We are in a hard time right now in this country and in this church world. And what should have made things better has actually made things worse because of the spirits on people. You would have thought COVID would have drove more people in the church, but it's actually driven more people out of church because we're still blinded to see that we can't control everything, that at any given moment, God can do one thing or he can allow one thing to happen that can change the whole world you call yourself living in. I would have thought people would have got closer to God with all the deaths that took place. And that's some of you here, maybe there were some family members, some friends, you know, that passed away. And you need to have a memory of those people and realize life is short. As long as it may seem, as long as your days may seem at times, life is still short. And you need to make the best of the time you have. Stop talking about you getting ready to do. You don't have to get ready to do nothing. You should leave this building today without saying, I'm doing it now while I have time. I present my body a living sacrifice. Because tomorrow is not promised. They said that. COVID only took out people who had underlying conditions. I know people who died who didn't have conditions. They said it should be for the elders to be careful. I know several young people that passed away. It was a young lady who just graduated who's connected to our family. And as soon as she graduated, they went a couple months later, they just found her dead in the home somewhere. Mother's a powerful woman of God. And the good thing is, is that she grew up in church enough that she know enough about God that even if she wasn't serving him, she still knew she should have served him and had enough knowledge to get things straight. And I don't know if she was or wasn't, but some of us better be thankful that you come to the knowledge of God that you know how to get things straight. But if I were you, I wouldn't be gambling with my life. I would just get it straight. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. A living Sacrifice. I mean, people say, Brother Stevenson, I'm going to present my body a living sacrifice. Holy. I, I'll be the first to It's not easy. We go when we don't feel like going. We pray when we don't feel like praying. And what's good about having someone in church who's serving God with you is you have to encourage one another. What is it in church for? We get so hard on each other. We put one another down. We so, you know, so so back and forth in the sense where we treat one another. We're not even brothers and sisters. People are going through all types of hell. Dealing with stuff you know nothing about. Some people hide it well because they dress up nice and look nice and know how to smile on your face. But never be too foolish that you forget you ain't the only somebody suffering. 
folks dealing with court systems and court cases and trying to hunt down daddies and mamas and folks who should be helping to take care of kids and some people dealing with past failures of wishing I would never did what I know I did do and even though God forgave them they still have a hard time forgiving themselves and now here you come along putting more pressure on them come on. amen, amen. amen. Straining and struggling financially, so trying to make ends meet, trying to pay bills, trying to take care of children. You got to present your body a living sacrifice, not so much just doing your church assignments, but even sacrificing to show love to people when you don't feel like you're being loved yourself. Speaking to people who don't want to speak to you. See, y'all don't want to talk to me now. Forgiving people who feel like they haven't forgave you. That's what it means to present your body a living sacrifice. It seems like it's unfair. It seems like it ain't right. It seems like they get away with murder. But because I'm presenting my body a living sacrifice, God, I'm going to do it just because you said it. Do it. That's what my pastor used to preach to us. He used to tell us, love the hell out of them. I wish I had some real folks here. It's a sacrifice knowing you treat me like trash, and yet I got a smile on your face. Sometimes you think to yourself, my God, son, they got everybody food. Everybody think they some great something, and you know how they looking at you crazy? Sending you crazy, choking, and talking bad about your back, and sometimes their customers say, everybody praising them, and you say to yourself, I ain't standing at no good fun, but you still got to present your body as a living sacrifice, and still thank God that God still gave them the opportunity to be saved. They may be your enemy for 50 years, but don't stop loving them, because the 51st year they might get saved, and they might get saved all because of the sacrifice you made. Yes. Don't tell me sacrifices don't save people. Because Jesus was an ultimate sacrifice. And we're saved. 33 years on earth. And his message is still speaking well over thousands of years later. You ought to clap for Jesus. Are you thankful for his sacrifice? I said, are you thankful for his sacrifice? And if he can sacrifice, then why come you can't sacrifice? Are you listening to me? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. Am I doing all right? Wait a minute. Acceptable unto God. Before I do or don't do anything, God, are you accepting this? Is this acceptable or is this unacceptable in your sight? I don't feel like God accepts for me to be right here in town and know I can be a blessing and be a help. Know I can be where I'm supposed to be, and yet I refuse to be there. Amen. I'm waiting on a few more, amen. 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 Y'all gonna have me waiting all day. I better move on. <laughs> that was a joke. Is it all right to joke sometime? <laughs> we have to ask ourselves, would God accept this or will he not accept what I'm doing in the music that I listen to? <clears throat> Love when you felt unloved. You had cared when you felt uncared for. And it feel like your heart has just been broken down and hewn into pieces, almost like it's been chopped up and diced up. It's like some things you wanted to happen have not happened the way you thought they should have. And you get into a place in your life right now where God is causing you to settle down. Things that used to make you happy don't make you happy no more. And you almost said to yourself, I don't want to miss my life. I want to be sure that my life is going where it needs to go. And that's why you've been drawn to this house of worship here. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Now do me a favor, turn this way right here. I, I'm sorry about all this stuff. No, 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 I mean turn around this way. I'm sorry about all that weird stuff. I do that because I walk when I talk. Glory to God. I want you to make a commitment and recommit yourself here to the house of God. Because God going to call some people to eat some words they said about you too. They're going to eat some words. Glory to God. Your name begin with an L. Laquita or Laquita? Huh? Hallelujah! Oh, ba 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 ha Get ready. God's been nugging at you, he's been tugging at you, and he's been pulling on you. 
and you've been drawn here and you sit there in the house of God and you've listened to the wisdom, you've listened to things that's been taught, you haven't understood everything, but you know what you feel. God told me to tell you, you're going the right direction. Don't let nothing stop you, nothing hinder you. Because God's going to do a work on the inside of you. And I see this work going to go from the inside is going to flourish on the outside. And I even see, you know, you're a good mother, but I see you being a better mother to those kids. God's going to teach you how to deal with some distresses and pressures there. Glory to God. I see you minister to all the people, and I truly see God mending that brokenness in your heart. I really didn't see that. I mean, your heart has just been stepped on it, just like it's just been, I mean, just like beat to pieces on your heart. And you have been patiently waiting for some things to happen, but it's like, my God, I, I kind of, you know, need to settle down and get some things put together. But God's going to help these things to come together in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. Glory to God. When the last time you talked to your mother? This morning. This morning? I don't, glory to God. I don't know what it is, but your mama need God to do a miracle in her body too as well. Hallelujah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I don't. You huh? Yes. Now we haven't talked, have we? No. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have seen the word. The anointing that's on this man and woman of God is an anointing for healing. There's babies who have holes in their heart field. We just don't send the word to mama. Come on, mama, pray. Jesus' name. This is your time and your season. This is your time and your season. And don't wait on nobody else. God's leading you. You're going to head up some things for the whole household. Watch what I tell you. The whole household, you're going to head up some things. In the name of Jesus. Friend, I'm so thankful that you got a chance to hear the word of the Lord to see the signs and wonders of God during this telecast. We prayerfully hope that this was not the last time that you stay connected with our ministry. Just like you was blessed during this broadcast, we truly believe that you will continually be blessed if you will continue to watch us each and every week on this same station at this same time. You know, friend, if you look on the screen, there's a number you can call. We want to pray with you for any prayer request you may have, anything you believe in God for, we want to connect our faith with you. And more importantly, if there's a lack of salvation in your life, if you feel far from God, we want you to understand that the purpose of our ministry is to build your faith and to have you walking closer with God. Feel free to go to the phone right now. You can go to our website as well. You can connect with us through social media. Don't let this be a one-time event. Stay connected with us as this is a God-given connection. And as we go off the air, we want to remind you of the love of God and the hope of Christ. Blessings to you on behalf of Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries.